Welcome back. Now, we all look forward to a relaxing summer getaway, but going on holiday has its challenges from getting through the airport to finding your way around a foreign country. Oh, it's great crack, isn't it? Yeah. Luckily, travel expert Sarah Slattery is here to give us some travel hacks to take the stress out of your summer <clears> holiday. It has to be said, Sarah, if you look around in the airport, it is just the ideal ground for arguments amongst families, isn't it? And stress Absolutely. and trying to control children. And you remember this and it, it can be quite stressful. Yeah. So let's talk about a few hints to make, make it more of a holiday and yeah. more stress free. Um, research, first of all, what, sh what should we be researching before we go? Well, there's a couple of sites that I suppose people don't, aren't aware of. So I thought the first one was the weather. Um, because of the fact that the weather, the, the climate's changing so much and you often hear people saying, oh, I was in Mallorca last year in May, it was lovely. Or, but sometimes, you know, what weather at the beginning of May versus the end of May could be completely yeah. different. Mm. And there's a really good website called Wonderground and they have a historical tab. So you can click on it and you can find out what the weather was like for the week you're going for the last five, ten years. So you'll get a really accurate kind of, if you want to plan, you, well, should I go to the Algarve? Should I go to the Canary? Should I go? You'll know if it's <clears throat> rainy season or hurricane season, all that. You'll be able to tell for the last five or ten years. So it'll give you a really accurate... And you'll know as, what to pack. As, as, as good, or even just before you book. So you'll know mm. it, it's, it's probably the best research weather um, yeah. site, I think, at the moment. Um, car hire excess insurance. The joys of mm -hmm. car hire and excesses. This is kind of a this bit of a, be a mind everyone. Field. Everyone has had a moment in a car oh, hire desk, God. haven't yeah. they? Yeah, that's. It, I have to say, it's one of my. It's a big bugbear of mine, especially when you arrive with kids, and you're tired, and you just want to get the car and go, and you have these over eager salespeople telling you that if you scratch the car, it'll cost you two grand or something like that, yeah. um, and you end up paying the excess policy that you swore you wouldn't pay when you got yes. there. Yeah. Um, but there's a really good, um, it's an Irish company actually, it's called carhireexcess.com and um, you can now pay, instead of I think the average is about 15 euros a day for the car, so you can pay 2.99 a day That's and, very good, and take it? an insurance policy out before you go. So when you get to the desk, you show them your policy, I have my excess, don't try and sell me anything. Right. And uh, I've used it the last two times now and it's absolutely brilliant. I would never hire a car without it now. And it's just peace of mind. You know you're arriving. You're not going to get it ripped off. And you're not exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one, which <laughs> travelling with the paragraph reads, travelling with kids. Hmm. Discuss. Uh, <laughs> the first thing you mentioned, though, which is a good point, is about luggage. Because yeah. I was talking to Sarah about, you know, we're going away now shortly, and mm. we just put one bag through because it's forty-five quid each way yeah. for a bag. Yeah. Which is it's, great. It's, you know, it's and there's six of us. And it adds so, up, doesn't so it? So the yes. kids are going to bring their little wheelie on things. Yeah. Their trunkies. Yeah. Well. This is the thing. Yeah. You're saying lightweight baggage. I think as soon as they're... I think the trunkies are fantastic for starting off for young yeah. kids. But as soon as they're able to wheel a 10 kilo, a lightweight, <clears throat> let them... Get them a, on they'll it. be delighted with their own case. Yeah. Um, and it'll <clears throat> save you so much. Invest in a really lightweight, the best, actually, you can get because you'll get the money back after one or two trips. Yes. Um, in a good, lightweight, 10 kilo cabin bag, the full size that you can go, the 55 centimetres or whatever it is. And... Um, and give the, let, let the kids have their own case. Um, and I often use at home, you can bring whatever fits in your suitcase as well. That tends to kind of go well, so they don't mm -hmm. want to pack every toy they have or whatever. Um, but it's, it, it also, it's just, it just saves you a fortune. And if you invest in a good one, so it won't be wrecked. So if you've paid or... for your children's flight tickets... Yeah. They're covered for a they're bag. They're covered for, for a, a bag. I actually bag. never thought about that. Just yeah. for a carry-on bag. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how we're going to spread the, all yeah. of our stuff for six people across four bags. Yeah. Because we'll have the 25 kilo bag yeah. and then the two eldest, Cameron and And I think it's a bit of fun for them to wheel it through and totally. a sense of responsibility until, until, it. until yeah. it's left in the coffee shop. Well, <laughs> that's, yeah. But that is very true. You know what I was going to say as well, though? You know the way you can check, before you board the plane, you can check the size of the bag. You know, yeah. they have the little thing. Yes. Why don't they have them in the supermarkets when you're when buying, you're the, buying bags? the bag? Because I never, I'm always wetting myself when it comes to buying <laughs> those bags gone. I know it's only 20 quid or whatever, but it could be too big. They Why don't they have them there? They'll say cabin size bags. I think it's 55. Uh, yeah, but you can stick a sticker on it and say it's cabin friendly. Well, that's friendly. true, I suppose. But if you buy, this, I suppose this is kind of going back to, I think if you buy a really good bag, yeah. you know, that's really lightweight. It can be a difference of one or two kilos, you know, yeah, for, yeah. in some of the lightweight, the cheapy bags, the good ones so that can make up that can be a massive difference um when you're when you're and it might mean that whether you have to buy a, a, a checked bag or not exactly
But it's a great tip. Um, you believe as well, Sarah, in reading travel blogs. Yeah, I'm in, of course. Of, I know. Obviously yeah. your own. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Which I is mean, very good. Do, I think, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I know it's a bit of a plug there. But, uh, yeah, um, and I think a lot of the research beforehand, like websites like TripAdvisor or travel blogs will tell you things to do and what to do. But another really good source is um, the tourist boards. So you'd be amazed, people would never really think to look at those. So you'd be surprised... Like if you're doing, especially in a city break, they'll have a city pass where you get your transport um, plus 20% off top attractions, things like that. So you might yeah. get an all-in pass rather than going to each one and paying separately. Thanks, separate mm -hmm. um, and Attraction Tickets Direct is another um, website where they sell attraction tickets in advance and they give you the real tickets. So you don't have to queue. They're usually cheaper as well, but you don't have to queue. When you get there, you just walk straight through. There you go. So there's a lot of sort of online things you can do before you go to make it... Um, and speaking easier. of online stuff, you, yeah. you have like travel apps. Yeah. So what, what apps will be useful in terms of... Well, again, a lot of people, holidays? although they might use TripAdvisor all the time, they don't download the apps. Um, and it, like, trip, it's great if you're in a strange city and you're looking for a restaurant and you're wandering around and you're going, that looks good, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. But, it, it, you know, they will send you push notifications to say there's a nice Italian 200 yards around the corner yeah, or clever, things like that. Yeah. Um, or, and you can put in preferences, the type of things you're looking for, things to do with kids, nice restaurants, whatever, and they will send you the notifications about. And it shouldn't cost you money because you can leave your 3G on to receive your push notifications yeah. because the roaming charges are gone, but you have to check your own network. Well, but you have there. to check the data usage. Well, exactly. a, lot of, a lot of the apps now as well, they're really good. You don't need to use them. Um, you don't, yeah, that's you know, like Google Translate is brilliant as well. Yeah, yeah. So you can take a photograph of the the sign or the menu or tourist board, whatever, um, and it'll translate it for you. Um, Una cerveza know, grande, por favor. Well, <laughs> you, you, maybe you don't need it. <laughs> you can go home after that. Um, one other thing, you feel it's very basic, Sarah, but I don't think everybody does it. Scanning your documents yeah. before you go, yeah. so you, it, just in case just you lose case. your passport or boarding yeah. pass or whatever. I mean, you don't like to think something bad will happen, but it's just... It's peace of mind. And if you do it once, you know, you have it for every trip. Yeah, it's So, fun. your insurance policies, the numbers to ring, your passports, it's so much easier. So, just email them to yourself. Well, you can do that. You can put them in, you know, Dropbox in the cloud, or you can old fashioned photocopy them in a folder and in, in your handbag, bag. whatever. And you, you see, know. you've done it once, you have them there exactly. for every trip. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Marvellous. Sarah Slattery, thank you thank very you, much. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.